Hi, and welcome back. So these polyunsaturated fats are vital for our heart and our brain health. They've been linked to a stronger immune system, reduced inflammation, lower blood pressure, and also lower triglycerides, reducing the risk of heart disease and also cognitive decline. But most people in the US, and I'm guessing in most Western countries too, don't include enough of them in their diets. Anne Skoulis Ray, an assistant professor at the University of Arizona in Tucson said, intake in the US is abysmally low. And there are links in the description below to the studies and to the articles I use to put this presentation together. There are three main types of omega-3 fatty acids. They are ALA, DHA and EPA. Our bodies can convert small amounts of ALA into EPA and DHA. But the main way people increase levels is to consume foods and or supplements that contain omega-3 fatty acids. However, survey data shows that the average US typically consumes very little EPA and DHA, with the average intake being somewhere around 0.1 grams per day. US health agencies don't offer guidelines on how much EPA or DHA a person should include in their daily diet. That said, there is a recommendation for daily consumption of ALA. This is based on age and gender. The National Academy of Medicine recommends men consume 1.6 grams of ALA a day, and for women, it's just 1.1 grams per day, and that women who are pregnant or breastfeeding do need more. ALA is found in walnuts and some plant oils, such as flaxseed, soybean, and canola. Personally, I would steer well clear of all of the seed oils. EPA and DHA are high in oysters and fatty fish, such as salmon, sardines, mackerel, herring, and also lake trout. The American Heart Association, that's the AHA, recommends eating two servings of fish, particularly fatty fish, every week to help reduce heart disease and also the risk of stroke. Two servings equals around six ounces when cooked. People should ideally get all their nutrients from their food, but dietary supplements, such as fish oil, are another way that people can consume these healthy fats, especially if they don't like the taste of fish. An AHA science advisory in 2017 said omega-3 fish oil supplements may slightly lower the risk of dying after heart failure or a recent heart attack, but that they do not prevent heart disease. The American Heart Association issued a separate science advisory in 2019 stating that four grams per day of prescription Fish oil supplements were a safe and effective way to lower triglycerides. That's the most common type of fat in our bodies. This for people who have elevated triglyceride levels. And a 2022 analysis published in the Journal of the American Heart Association found consuming three grams each day of EPA and DHA in food or in supplement form may be the ideal dose to help lower your blood pressure. If you're enjoying the video and you'd like to do me a solid, there's no need to give me a thumbs up and there's no need to subscribe. If you want to help, please share the video anywhere is fine. Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, X, even Rumble, really anywhere is fine. Back to the video. A 2023 analysis, again published in the Journal of the American Heart Association, found that taking more than two grams per day of DHA and EPA combined in supplement form may lower triglycerides and non HDL cholesterol. Your non-HDL cholesterol is your total cholesterol minus your HDL cholesterol. This helps the body to get rid of some of the harmful LDL. The study's senior author, Dr. Li, a professor at Macau University of Science and Technology in China, said people with high levels of LDL cholesterol need to seek alternative medications such as statins to reduce the blood level of LDL cholesterol. The new findings also show omega-3 supplements may be especially beneficial for people who are either overweight or obese. This because US adults typically don't get the recommended daily amount of omega-3 fatty acids. Professor Skoulis Ray, who was the lead author of the AHA's 2019 advisory said, any amount of supplement has the potential to help, even if it doesn't lower triglycerides. She added that for the average person taking dietary supplements is really just correcting the nearly absent EPA and DHA from the American diet. Dietary supplements are a completely viable option for people who don't want to eat oily fish. Now, obviously, people should always talk to a healthcare professional before they start taking any new supplement. 
She also said that low doses may be less likely to lower triglycerides, but they're still worth taking because people simply aren't getting enough. They help to support optimal immune function, wellness, and also aging, and that's really the goal. I will have taken my last blood test when this video airs on YouTube, and I've been taking 800 milligrams of EPA and 600 milligrams of DHA for the last three months now. So I'll see if it's done anything to my triglyceride levels, although they're normally well within reference range. If you'd like to learn more about omega-3 fatty acids, take a look at my supplement stack in the description below. There's a link to a far more detailed video. And if you're looking for a reputable supplier to buy these supplements from, check out the big three, Renew by Science, Do Not Age, and Pro Health Longevity. And if you do buy from one of these, please feel free to use the code MYNMN at checkout to get between 10 and 15% off. And there are specific links to these companies' omega-3 products in the description below.